Next up, we have Carol Napier, who has been an Elmwood member and actor for about 30 years. She told us that one of her favorite memories of the fall was getting lost in Harriman Park, tromping on gorgeous fall leaves, and getting back on track only because she happened to bump into a Boy Scout troop. <laughs> Please welcome to the porch someone who is no stranger to falling in and out of love. Here to share some of her experiences leading up to finally finding her human love at the age of 59, welcome to the porch, Carol Napier. in love during my early and middle adulthood was kind of like hiking on a trail with a bunch of brambles. I tripped a lot. I wanted a lifetime partner. I wanted to be a mother. Maybe I was, I was cautious. I could imagine all the things that could go wrong. Maybe I was thinking too much about my career or, or maybe I loved my freedom so much. Or maybe I was just not a very good cook, and that embarrassed me. <laughs> so I carried on with my life, pursuing passions, figuring maybe I'll meet somebody doing what I love doing the most. So one of my passions from my childhood, because of my grandmother, was New Age spirituality. And I heard there was a community in Scotland. This is still happening, the Fentorn community. I went there in, 17, in 1976, um, <laughs> and during that trip I thought, I'm surely going to meet somebody here, you know, how cool is this? We, our group went on a hike, and we were by a beautiful river, and two rivers converged, and I was being very mindful, and I stared right into the convergence of those rivers at the moment that a huge fish leapt out. And I felt like, wow, that was for me, because I was, I was looking right there. So I felt that I had been given a gift, and I, I paid attention to that. No, I didn't fall in love in Fintorn, but I started feeling another kind of love. Um, another big passion of mine was just taking walks in nature. And uh, one time when I was at Rockland Lake, Good place to meet somebody, right? I, 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 I had this sudden urge to see swans fly. And so I went down to the edge of the lake, and there was a swan. And I whack, whack. And the swan turned away from me and flew. And not only did that happen, but when it got to the other side of the lake, all the other swans on the other side started to fly too. That was for me, obviously. So, and again, such a surge of love. No, I, I didn't fall in love at Rockland Lake, but I felt a lot of love there. Another one of my passions has always been Native American spirituality. And I heard about the Tom Brown Tracker School. Tom Brown has written guidebooks, survival technique books. He's trained a lot of people in that, but he also grew up for most of his childhood with a Native American man, the grandfather of his best friend, Stockenwolf, who taught him also philosophy, Native American philosophy. During um, the philosophy class I took with Tom, he led us through guided visualizations. And during one of them, he told us, imagine yourself going out of this barn to any part of the property you have not seen before and look in your mind's eye at what is there. So I saw myself go to the stream that I knew was over there, and there was a huge tree at an angle over the stream, and there was a huge branch, perfect for sitting, on another tree. I thought, okay, not that unusual, but okay. So then he told us after the visualization to go where we had imagined, and when I got to the stream, there was a tree leaning over the stream, and there was a great branch for sitting. I hopped up on that branch, and my meditation buddy called out to me, Carol, you came to the stream too? I came to the stream, and I saw raccoon tracks in the sand. And we both looked down, and there were raccoon tracks in the sand. 
this gave me you know, a thrill, quite a feeling. No, I did not fall in love with Kevin or anybody else at the Tom Brown Trapper School. <laughs> Another time I became very interested in scuba diving, and I really thought I'd meet somebody scuba diving. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, had learned in Manhattan at a pool on 42nd Street, and I wanted to get myself out into the open water. So I went to the club bed in Cancun as a single person, and I actually got more interested in snorkeling in this fabulous coral reef they had. And while I did that, I came across a parrotfish that was about this long, and it looked like Peter Max drew it. It was. <laughs> It was blue and purple, neon almost, gorgeous. And so the last day of my stay there, I just wanted to see this parrotfish one last time. And nobody was out there, I just went anyway. And I, I had to go pretty far, and I found the fish, and then I also found a buddy that it was with, it was shorter, and orange and lime green, neon colors, gorgeous, also Peter Max. And there was a moment where the three of us were swimming in the same direction in a triangle. The orange one was a few feet there, and the blue one was a few feet there. And I thought, this is such a big gift. So I felt a lot of love at the Glove Med, but I did not fall in love at the Glove Med. <laughs> so what did I learn from these experiences in nature? Well, one thing I learned is I can have a yearning and it can be fulfilled. So in 2011, I met and fell in love with Brian, who loves me out loud and cooks for me every day. I fell in love with his children, his adult children, Regan and Tara, who call me mom. And another thing I learned was that nature responds to love. So now when I'm out, in a beautiful setting. I'm not looking for my life's partner. I'm checking out to find something that intrigues me. I'm broadcasting my love and interest and watching to hear a response. Thank you.